All right, here we go again. Um, I was going to do a video purely about anger and how anger can actually be useful for making changes and getting things done in your life. Um, but it does need to be controlled uh, quite carefully and uh, not so that you're constantly showing your anger to everyone else and uh, alienating people, which is, is one of the things it tends to do. Um, if you if you have an anger management problem, if you have anger management issues, I suggest you either go for counselling or um, just counsel yourself by watching YouTube videos and, and get a handle on it. Um, because, you know, over the long term, it's going to be causing problems for your physical health. Your um, body uh, isn't designed to be constantly in a state of anger because your, your blood pressure, you, you may just keel over and have a heart attack eventually or, or something similar ask your doctor what a constant state of anger and arousal will do to a person so you know um forgive people after a while um if if you can't forgive them just just forget about it and, and let it go after a while um and you'll you'll let go of that but anger when it's controlled can be a great thing and i may at some point do a video uh, i won't promise you that i'm going to be able to but um I, I may do at some point but um there's an interesting book and i'm just going to give a quick summary of it uh, the book is called the wisdom of psychopaths and it's by daniel uh, it's by kevin dutton uh, the wisdom of psychopaths why uh, what saints spies and serial killers can teach us about success this is on um, the DanielMeeslers.com website. I've just been reading this. Um, so the summary goes that the purpose of the book is to figure out why uh, regular people, they can learn from psychopaths, they can incorporate some of their characteristics and their personalities with good effect, um, and that they're quite misunderstood by most especially the media and regular folks. So I was looking at the profiles of some people the other day, some historical figures, especially like Winston Churchill was, um, was pretty high on the psychopath scale scale and, um, people in my family. Um, I, I've got a very, uh, prominent and successful surgeon in my family who, um, you know, is also pretty high on the scale. Um, but you know, I really respect these people. Um, they really keep a cool head and, um, focus on the goal and focus on the reward, um, and going through whatever's needed to achieve that, um, that goal and that reward. So a regular person can incorporate some characteristics in your personality and get some good out of it. And, um, it's not a binary thing. You're not one or you're not one. Um, there's a scale. So people who score at a certain level on the scale are generally considered to be psychopaths or have psychopathic um, characteristics. Um, but real, uh, full-on psychopaths are far more extreme than them. So you're thinking of like the, you know, the Patrick Bateman or the serial killer who's running around like a madman, stabbing everyone who, you know, hasn't done anything to them even. Um, but they're a good test for determining how much of a psycho you are or aren't. And then there's this PPI. And if you score around 28, you're considered psychopathic. But the, the as I say, the hardcore people are like way, way higher. Um, and it's associated with these key traits below. So you've got fearlessness, um, reduced empathy. There's antisocial behavior. There can be, there can be impulsiveness. There can be this superficial charm, grandiose self-worth, pathological lying, cunning, manipulative, lack of remorse, um, possibly behavior problems in early life, sexual promiscuity and many short marriages. Now, for myself, I know I have some of these traits. Um, particularly, I'm very, I'm kind of very focused on a reward and doing what's necessary to get that. So I'm a certain point on the scale, but I'm not. Uh, I'm not generally a violent psychopath, although I could be. I could be pushed to um, a state of 
um, you know, having to use violence, I, I would be able to do that uh, if I needed to. Um, you know, if, if someone I loved were threatened, for example, I, I would definitely take it on myself to uh, get revenge on someone who'd attacked a family or friend and, you know, they, they would be upset with that. But um, so there are these different traits you have. Uh, and there's like, if you're massively psychopathic, um, it can be too much of a good thing. So some people like, you know, finance people or lawyers or surgeons or things, they control these traits. So they, they get more of the traits that help them in their work and they dial down um, some of the other traits. So it's possible to be too fearless if you think that nothing bad's ever going to happen. Um, and then you get yourself into trouble and you do something that you can't uh, get out of. You end up um, killing yourself or hurting yourself, not caring enough about danger, not caring enough about what people think. You know, if you just if you were just uh, completely mindlessly um, shouting your mouth off as if there's no consequences to what you say. Um, but having more traits than most people is um quite often quite useful in life um so this book in the summary it says that we we all fearing the future too much we spend too much time regretting the past i know i have done in in um, my past i've definitely spent too much time in the past and i very much now like to live in the now and i'm doing things in the now to make now and the future better for myself and the people i know and hopefully for other people I don't even know. I mean, I'd like to do some good in life, um, good outcomes for people. Uh, so, yeah, we care too much about what others think. Well, no, that's not what me. So if that's a psychopathic trait, I've got a psychopathic trait there because I really do not care. Um, I'd prefer if people liked me or whatever, that would be better. But ultimately not really because usually I'm focused on the goal or the reward or whatever I'm, I'm doing or trying to achieve. Um, so yes, I do have that particular trait that I just don't care about what people think about me because I know I'll be like Marmite. Some people will like me and some people won't. Maybe a lot of people won't. I don't know. Um, so yeah, if, if you move towards, um, psychopaths for these type of things you will get happier i know that when i've really accepted myself and as you get older i may i may even accept myself even more because i'm you know 38 now um people are supposed to fully mature by the age of 43 or something so you know you get into that stage of life you accept yourself and really there's nothing anyone can use anything against you because you've accepted all your qualities anyway so you know i i am happy with that aspect of myself that i simply do not care what people think about me um the other points yeah real psychopaths they're masters of not having fear they're not attached like i say they don't care what other people think they're not attached to the past they're not worried about the future they're living in the now so that gives you a lot of power in dealing with the present now okay um and then so another example of that public speaking people are very worried about doing it but it's very beneficial for you um would a psychopath have trouble doing it it says no of course they, they would be fine they'd have a go at it and you know I, i'm thinking of my uncle the surgeon he was always fantastic at um, giving you know public speaking um, my brother as well, uh, he was always fantastic at that. Um, I don't know what he'd think about if I thought that... I th that this is the point, because I think people have psychopathic traits, even if they're not, you know, violent uh, psychopaths all the time. Uh, the, the psychopathic traits do help them to be better in some things. And then... Um, so it's about not being extreme in having the psychopathic traits ideally the perfect thing is being able to have uh, the good sides of it and control those so to be able to be passive and quiet sometimes 
then if you need to be able to do it like in battle or something you you, you go behind um, an enemy you stab him in the back with your commando dagger or you know you slit his throat um you you put your dagger right into his heart until blood gushes out um you know you, you stab him right in here in the neck just right down in there um and if you cut out his windpipe and blood will rush everywhere psychopaths are able to do that uh, very easily um and they will finish off the enemy uh, in a moment's notice so and they, they won't get scared about doing it so uh, and and they're not doing that because they are they're doing it for the good of society you know in the world war ii when they were doing this for um killing nazis whatever um something like that is really essential so um heroes and psychopaths it talks about heroes and psychopaths um they both have less fear they have less care about their safety but heroes don't tend to be antisocial there are other differences um so and there are different people heroes surgeons soldiers and so on and he's done a post again about moving between extremes so you're able to use the extreme scenario if you have to but hopefully most of the time you don't need to be violent um you know maybe you don't even need to ever kill anyone i never had to kill anyone yet um but if i had to if it was like self-defense and i needed to um i'm sure i'd be able to um of course there's a danger that you'll end up dead as well so it has to be it's an extreme scenario um not being meek and mild and not being a raging crazy psychopath patrick bateman running around the streets uh, with a chainsaw uh and then so there's this continuum we talked about it's a marker and then if you think about it just don't be too frightened don't be too timid don't be too weak um and most of the really well, i say not most but some of these hardcore psychopaths the ones that were violent all the time end up in prison so you really do need to control it about balancing the traits that you need in your particular line of work and dialing back the ones that are not going to be useful in uh, to you in society um and that's really it for now um but i i do believe there is there is stuff to learn from that and people in my life who have inspired me and definitely given me a lot of inspiration and um you know a lot of those people have been high on the psycho scale uh the churchills you know the kirby <laughs> so the kirby's my, my uncle the surgeon um you know people who can be cold and detached and focused on what they're doing and just nail it every time they're trusted to do what they're doing as their job they do it all the time and it's perfect so yeah that's the summary of that what do you think please like share subscribe if you like this type of content please do comment on this are you a psychopath are you patrick bateman do you like to stab people to death and play around with their blood all the time um or are you one of these kind of non-violent fun more functional types of people with some you know psycho traits what are you i'd love to know if you can admit that maybe you do have some psycho stuff about you that would be great cheers see you in the next video bye